If you have an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series S, it is very likely that you are not getting its full potential. Precisely because these consoles do a lot of things that most people don't even know about. Therefore, in this video, we will talk about tricks you can do with the controls, how to transfer games over the network, play remotely, and show you hidden sensors in the console. In short, a lot of interesting things and awesome secrets about your new Xbox. Super players. Did you know that you can control your Xbox without even having to use your hands? It's true. You can control your console using only your voice through a digital assistant like Google Home or Amazon's Alexa. To do this, first you have to make sure that the power mode of the console is instant on. Then go to settings, devices and connections, digital assistance, and select the option enable digital assistance. Once this is done, you can now configure your device to recognize your Xbox. For example, if you are using an Amazon digital assistant, go to the Alexa app and install the Xbox skill, log in with your account, activate the skill, and you are ready to go. You can use commands like Alexa, tell Xbox to turn on, Alexa, turn off my Xbox, Alexa, turn down the Xbox volume, or Alexa, launch Rainbow Six Siege. A super practical tip that can be very useful on a day-to-day -day basis, or at least to surprise your friends. Do not tell me that you are so lazy that even controlling your Xbox by voice is not enough for you. Ah, yes, I understand that the problem is that although you can control your console, you have to turn on the TV and you are very lazy to use the control of your television or stop to turn it on, right? Don't worry, you can have your Xbox turn on automatically when your Xbox turns on. Go to the Power Mode and Startup Setup screen and select TV and AV Power Options. Check the HDMI CEC box and you are ready to go. In fact, you can activate or deactivate even more specific options such as your console turning on or off other devices, or that other devices can turn off the console and even have your console send volume commands to your television or soundbar. A tip for people very, very comfortable, but at the same time, very, very practical. One of the coolest things you can do on Xbox is that the console allows you to preload everything. All games can be preloaded. If you have all your games in digital format, this means that if you pre-order a game, you can start downloading it before it is released and on launch day, you just have to activate it. Also, if you are waiting for a game to be on sale, you can have all its data downloaded and you can buy it to activate it when it is at the best price. But even if you are a player who still uses physical games, this tip can also be extremely useful because physical games are less and less physical. It is common that they come with giant update downloads or digital content or that they simply force you to download the full game, no matter you have it on disc. There, the preload is also quite useful since it allows you to start downloading before having the disc in your hands. To do this, just go to the Xbox app on your cell phone, select the game to download, and choose the console to which you want to download it. That way, the game will start to download and you will be ready to play it in the shortest time possible. Xbox has an option called Copilot, which links two controls so that you and another player can use them as if they were one. Go to Settings and then to Controller and choose Copilot Settings. There, you can select Turn On Copilot and select which control will be the copilot. This was designed as an accessibility alternative for players who may be unable to use the controller normally, but it is also a way for two players to play a single player game. In addition, it is a good option for an adult to help the little ones to enjoy games that use a more advanced control scheme. When we went from Xbox One to Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, many people were a bit disappointed to realize that the user interface for the operating system is practically the same as the previous generation of Xbox had. This is largely due to the fact that this Xbox interface lives in constant evolution and it really is already a modern and agile interface that has taken many iterations to get to this point. However, few people know that only in the new Xbox consoles, there are what are known as dynamic themes, where you can have animated backgrounds and you can customize them to your liking. For example, you can change the animation type and the background color. Also, check out this Halo Infinite dynamic theme. Cool, right? And of course, you still have the usual classic options, such as putting a photo of a background, a profile photo, changing the order of the guide, in short, modifying the interface so that your console looks how you want it to look. If you are a millionaire like me and every now and then you stumble upon one of your many Xbox that you have throughout your house, this tip can be useful to take advantage of all of your consoles. 
if you have more than one Xbox, either the new generation or the previous generation, you can have them communicate with each other to share the game files. For example, on the Xbox Series S, it is very common for one to have to delete games to free up space, but the downside is having to download them again, especially if you don't have good internet speed. But if you have more than one Xbox connected to the same network, either via Wi-Fi or, much better still, via a wired network, you can make your Xbox copy the information of a game downloaded to another console, in such a way that you don't have to download it online and, therefore, you will not be limited to the speed of your internet, nor will you consume its bandwidth. I do this very often when I need to reinstall a game on my Series S. I just tell it to connect to my Series X and copy it. In my case, I reach speeds of 100 megabytes per second with a wired network, but if you have a local network that supports more speed, you can make the transfer much faster still with speeds of almost 1 gigabyte per second. Wow! If you have several profiles and several controls on your console, and every time you turn on your Xbox, it bothers you that they always ask you which profile do you want to log into, there is also a tip for that. If you go to Settings, Account, and then to Sign In, Security, and Passkey, there you can activate the option This Controller Signs In, and then select Link Controller. In this way, you can make each person have a profile associated with their controller, and when the Xbox is turned on, it automatically knows which profile it should start in, and thus avoid that little extra step each time you turn on your console. The Series X brings 1TB of storage and the Series S more or less half, 512GB. But of that space, the operating system occupies a significant part, and therefore you only have about 802GB usable for the Series X and 364GB for the Series S, which really is not much space. But if you're running out of storage on your console, there are at least several ways to expand it. The first is with a proprietary Xbox expansion card which at the moment is only available with 1TB and costs around $200, which is quite a considerable amount since it is almost half or more than half of what costs the console itself. However, its performance is practically identical to that of your console, and we know that they will eventually drop in price. The good thing is that there are other cheaper ways to expand it since you can use external storage, be it a mechanical hard drive or an SSD by connecting it through the USB port to your Series X or your Xbox Series S. But you have to know a few things. The first is that your Xbox is going to format this disk so that it can use it on the console. That means it will erase all the information it has and you will not be able to use that partition on another device unless you reformat it. The second is that the games of the new generation Series X and Series S will not run from your external USB storage as they are too slow for the new generation and therefore you will only be able to run games from Xbox One, Xbox 360 and the original Xbox. But, and this is the most important clarification, although you cannot run new games from your external storage, you can store them there as a backup. It means that you can download all your Series X and S games to your external storage to free up space on your Xbox, and when you need them, you can transfer them to the console's fast storage, which is always much faster than downloading it from scratch. So yes, there are definitely options to expand the storage of your Xbox Series X and your Xbox Series S. Are you bothered by those games that use extremely small text? The kind that can hardly be seen and you have to be getting closer to the screen to be able to read more or less what they say? For those cases, you can activate the magnifying glass. Hold down the Xbox button until it vibrates and press the view button. Once the view button is pressed, select yes and you're done. You can use the right stick to scroll the screen and the triggers to adjust the zoom. Very practical so as not to mistreat your eyesight and to find that camper or sniper that always hides in the distance and that you can hardly see. Why don't you tell me what this button is for? I hear ya. <laughs> okay, okay. Normal gamers will say that this button is used to synchronize the controls to the console, which is true. However, only true super players know that this button is also an infrared sensor that the Xbox use so that universal remote controllers or more traditional TV remotes can control your Xbox. It is also used by Xbox Media Remote. Didn't you know that information, right? Ah. Starting with the Xbox One S, all Xbox One and new Xbox can use the same power cables and the same HDMI cables for video. However, only the Xbox Series X comes with an ultra-high-speed HDMI 2.1 cable capable of displaying games at 4K and 120Hz. This makes a lot of sense, because of all the consoles, only the Series X can reach that graphical potential. 
This is a very important piece of information in case you buy a Series X and you were thinking of reusing your old HDMI cable to play at super epic resolutions and speeds. You will not be able to do it. Use the cable that came with your console or another HDMI 2.1 cable that meets the necessary specifications. One of the best things about the new Xbox is that you can use your old Xbox One controllers on them. But many people do not know that the opposite can also be done. That is, you can use controllers from the new Xbox on the Xbox One. And it is that the backward compatibility of accessories is not limited only to Xbox One controls, but accessories such as driving wheels, headphones, adaptive control, etc. I recommend that you Google the official list of supported accessories to see if your device can be used in the new Xbox, but it is very likely that it will be. And speaking of controllers, did you know that only with the Xbox Series X and S controllers you can have two devices synchronized at the same time? For example, you can have your Xbox and your PC synchronized in a single control, and to switch between each one, you just have to click on the synchronization button. A super practical tip that very few people know. In this era where social networks are so important, Xbox allows you to capture images or videos from your console to share them with your friends. And now that the Xbox Series S and Series X have a dedicated button to do this, it's easier than ever to capture those special moments. Better yet, if you have the Xbox app installed on your device, you can see all the captures you have taken and download the one you like the most. You can even share it to your friends through WhatsApp, Instagram, basically any chat or social network. If you like the dark theme on your Xbox but only at night, you can activate an option to synchronize the themes with your time zone. That way, you can have the light theme during the day and the dark theme at night automatically. Very cool, huh? Another of the super practical things you can do with the Xbox app is to use it as if it were a keyboard. You only have to have it open when you need to enter text so that you can type much faster through your phone. Very useful for text chatting and searching for content. Similarly, you can simulate an Xbox controller using the on-screen buttons and be able to control your console without using a controller. But the best function of the Xbox app has to be Remote Play. With this function, you can turn any device into an Xbox. Basically, it allows you to stream from your console to your device and play all your Xbox games on a PC, tablet, or cell phone, be it Windows, Android, or iOS. Obviously, like all streaming technologies, the better your network connection, the better it will work. However, it is not the best way to play competitive games that require very fast reflexes because you will always have some latency no matter how good your connection is. But for games like RPGs or adventure games, it works quite well. You can use the controller of your console on your device via Bluetooth as well as controllers on the screen, and you can even use your AirPods to play games and chat with your friends. What's more, there are accessories dedicated for this purpose specifically, and they make your device become kind of like a Nintendo Switch, but for Xbox. And the best of all, not only can you do this connected to the same network as your Xbox in your own home, but you can also do it from the internet. It means that with this function, you can have access to all the games on your console from anywhere in the world. Super, super epic. If you are one of the super players who loves to get as many achievements as possible to each game they put their hand on, you will be pleased to know that Xbox has a dedicated function especially for you. You just have to activate an option called Achievement Tracking. Choose its location on the screen, how many achievements you want to see at the same time, and the level of transparency that you like the most. And that's it! At all times, you will have visibility of the progress of several achievements at the same time, and thus, you can be much more effective and efficient hunting all the achievements that come your way. With the change of generation of consoles, many people are unaware that all the progress you have acquired in an Xbox game remains in the cloud tied to your account. It means that if you are playing on your Xbox and you advance a game, and then you open that same game on a Windows PC, you will be able to continue your progress in a transparent way. The same as if you played on Xbox One and went to a Series S, or even the other way around, from a Series S to an Xbox One. It always works and it does it automatically. Best of all, unlike other services such as PlayStation Plus or Nintendo Switch Online, on Xbox, you don't need to pay for the Xbox Live Gold service to always have your game saved in the cloud. So no matter what happens to your console or its storage, your progress is always secured in the Xbox Cloud. You can connect a mouse and keyboard to your Xbox Series X or Series S through its USB ports. 
That way, not only will you be able to navigate the console's operating system using these accessories, but there are some games that have native support for these devices. Of course, with a mouse and keyboard, it is much easier to aim than with a controller, and for this reason, competitive online games such as Fortnite or Modern Warfare offer the option of separate game lists for players who use a mouse and keyboard. Currently, the list of games that support mouse and keyboard is not that long, but it is growing little by little, making your Xbox feel more and more like a true gamer PC. Games occupy more and more space, and yet, consoles continue to have the same storage capacities as their predecessors, and in some cases, even less. And especially in Xbox exclusives, it is normal to run into games like Gears 4, Halo 5, or MCC with sizes that reach or exceed 100 gigabytes. That said, at least we have options. Did you know that some games allow you to install only the part that interests you? For example, in the MCC, you can install only the games that interest you from the collection. And you can also do something very similar by uninstalling games. For example, in extreme cases of games like Modern Warfare that weigh almost 200 gigabytes, this is super important. You can do all this not only on your console, but also in the Xbox app, and it is one of the most important tips to get the most out of the scarce storage of your new console. The new generation consoles allow you to record gameplay without a capture device connected to a PC. However, many people think that this recording is limited to 30 seconds or a couple of minutes at a maximum of 1080p. But the true super players know that the Xbox can be configured to record up to an hour of gameplay. And not only that, but the resolution of the gameplay can go up to 4K at 60 frames per second or whatever your console supports. To do this, you just have to add an external storage and format it as NTFS. Keep in mind that your console uses this format for multimedia content, and therefore, it is a different format than the one used to record game data. In all groups where there is voice chat, there is always that person whose microphone sounds horrible or who simply wants to attract attention by screaming, eating, or playing music. A very useful tip to deal with this situation is that now on Xbox, you can modify the individual volume for the microphone of each member of the group. That way, you can turn up the volume that you don't hear well and turn down the volume for the noisy ones. A rather funny curiosity is that from the Xbox One S. Xbox has begun to include a small image of Master Chief on their consoles as an Easter egg. The Xbox One X also had it when we saw Master Chief riding a scorpion, and now you can find it on the fan of the Series X and on the cover of the power supply in the Series S. Cool, right? The first time we saw the next generation Xbox was at the unveiling of the Series X console and a couple of months later saw the Series S model. However, before the official presentation of the Series S, they had shown this console months in advance. It's just that the vast majority did not realize it. If you pay attention to this interview with Phil Spencer in July, you will realize that there was a Series S on its side in this bookcase in the background, in full view of everyone, and at the same time, unnoticed. This has resulted in people being very aware of what our beloved Phil Spencer has around him. And finally, for me, the best secret of all. Xbox Live Gold is the paid membership that allows you to play online games with your friends, among other benefits. On the other hand, Game Pass is another paid membership on Xbox that allows you to enjoy many games included in your subscription, something like the Netflix of video games. But there is a third subscription that combines the Gold subscription with the Game Pass subscription, called Game Pass Ultimate. This allows you to have all the Game Pass games and also to be able to play online and enjoy all the other benefits of Gold. In other words, the subscription of the true super players. Obviously, as the subscription combines two services, it is the most expensive of all. But did you know that you can exchange your Gold subscription for a Game Pass Ultimate subscription for practically free? It's true, you can buy Gold and then upgrade to Game Pass Unlimited for as little as $1. Better yet, you can use this method to convert up to three years of Gold to three years of Game Pass Ultimate, and it is totally legal. We do not know until when this promotion will be available, but as you will always need gold to play online and we expect Game Pass to get better and better, this is definitely the best time to use this offer and the best secret of the Xbox consoles. <laughs> Super players.